a love poem. Not in the way you may think, the way many already do, or the way I once did, but it is a love poem. This is love at its most sublime. This is love if it fell in love. This is love being able to tell the time. He caught me off guard like those toilets with a sense of flush. You sit back too far and it turns into a bidet mid push. <laughs> he looked at me like there are pages in between, not just a cover. He intimidated me in a motivational way, made me want to write more so there is more to discover. He made me feel inadequate. It was unintentional, but he did because there is nothing common about his sense. His mind is unconventional. His words, gold dust. Words I treasure knowing they exude quality. They cover my days, but don't weigh me down. A layer of protection when I can't tame my curiosity. It's dangerous. Being close to someone when you are prone to obsessive behaviours, when you meet someone and immediately believe that they are your saviour, and I know at a time my passion outweighed his, which hurt, but the reality is it's done me countless favours. He looked at me like an abstract painting, reading into me, not troubled that figuring me out involved watching and waiting. He fitted a window and a door in the wall I'd made, handed me the key without expectation, this was no trade. Light seeped through the window where we spoke of personal crusades until I was ready to concede and remove the barricades. When others stepped back as though they could catch my condition, he stepped up, looking at me as though catching me had been his lifelong ambition, and he did. He caught me with strength which far outweighed his stature. He taught me we ride waves on surfboards, not rubber dinghies, that is much harder to master. You create unnecessary work if you don't equip yourself with the tools to make sure you're looked after. And when our friendship narrowed to a one-way street, he didn't break. He travelled down it faster. He said, I like to look at your life as a piece of work in progress or a garment. It looks like shit right now, but one day, beautiful is what it's going to be. A joke. But I agree. He tells me to lean on him, ask me what I need after speaking, thanks me for sharing as though what I've said is an out of self-indulgent greed and when I speak to him, my words project back at me in his eyes. He's trying to see what I see, so that he can empathise. He spoke to me like me when I was impossible to recognise, advised me not to hide in the darkness, reasoning fear can't find me under its disguise. He speaks to me, about me, for me. Not to tell the other guys, never says relax or calm down. He knows it's not rational to feel those things all of the time. And when it first happened with him, and my emotions shifted into overdrive, he held me while I cried and said, I wore a green t-shirt so you can snot on it all you like. Any time since when an episode does arise, he takes a moment to change his shirt so any brain matter doesn't have to be compromised. And when I panic, he asks, should we do some breathing? Because it's not as simple as something I've been doing my whole life, he gives me butterflies. Not ones that are about to take flight, ones that aren't afraid to fight to survive. You owe me one, he'll jest, when he lends me art supplies, but don't mention it. In return for a night of restraining me from knives, you go, I go. Should never be a settlement to keep someone alive, but the thought of him going is not one I can bear in mind. The way he spoke of his friends when we first met was like each put a star in the night sky or with a reason for every sunset. I remember wanting him to speak of me the same way, vowing to become someone he would never forget at my lowest. I put him up so high it was hard to look at him without an ache in my neck. He was my morphine. I was mindful not to overprescribe to avoid an addiction that would only add to the battle to survive. At his weakest, he said, I'm all in. He was bluffing. This was not a hand he had strength in, but I couldn't tell he had nothing, so he won the hand, then took mine, held it next to his, and proved they are stronger together. Assuring me a tear will never fall alone again because his and mine are tethered. He slept with lights on for me, sacrificed his sleep so I could, and when I looked at him in horror because my mind told me he was a monster, he didn't flinch. He pretended he understood. Despite the tension, sleep deprivation and nocturnal activity, he maintained that I must be a genius with a sleep pattern to mirror the likes of Emily Ronte or Da Vinci. <laughs> and when I lose who I am with silence, he soothes me. 
then plays the songs in my heart to recall my identity. He confirmed, I can survive on my own, although blissfully unaware, because just when I thought his presence was set in stone, he had to go. And I served a wave bigger than in the past, I would have dared. It was then I knew my life wouldn't be the same without me. That others are an honour. But I am the one I need. He taught me these lessons without ever having to preach. There must be something more is the general consensus, but I fall for a human, not someone's gender. If that's the rules, my love life with friends would rival something from EastEnders. You can feel this way without concealing a hidden agenda, and I am in love with him. In this unconditional friendship and acceptance of growth. Lack of bitterness amid success, lack of judgment throughout woe. I like honesty and attention, but mainly honesty. <laughs> I can do it without him, but with him, to a whole new degree. For the foreseeable future, I'll line my wardrobe with t-shirts that are green. And if anyone needs a friend like him, I'll try to be their true sense of security. And finally, he said to me, you should hear what I say about you. Yeah. And I knew. I've become that friend he talks about like they are the most breathtaking view. He is the last time I'll introduce myself with, hi, I'm Jemima. I was abused. He's not my knight in shining armour, rather my antidepressant in liquid form, so it's easier to consume. Mm. One day, he's going to meet someone who no stars or sunsets can outdo, and when he does, I'm going to fall in love with them too. For showing him he is his everything, and that his flaws are the piece of his art that hold the most value. These days, we hold each other's hearts in our hands when they are heavy, then we hold each other's hands for support. He's been my composure during my storm, and if my storm doesn't cease, I just hope to be flashes of light on his days where the clouds show no remorse. When my roots were digging down, finding their way, he was the whisper through the neighbouring trees, reassuring me I would be my own source of energy one day. Mm. Now I take a gold-dusted leaf out of his book and keep it on display, a reminder. Words have the power to give a cliffhanger less falling space. If a trick of the mind can aid navigation rather than cause delay, I want to be a magician. And if you are someone's friend in the green t-shirt, wow, you are giving unconditional its definition. Thank you so much for having me.